everyone, and welcome back to my podcast. This is Anne of Fiber, Floss, and Fiction, and today is Friday, November 8th, 2019. I hope everyone is well. Uh, we are good here. Uh, I may get interrupted today, actually kind of like usual. Uh, my husband is on travel yet again, uh, and he's commuting back from the East Coast today, so he's in transit and... He usually likes to check in when he gets the first leg of his trip done, which I think is happening in the next hour or two. But at any rate, um, so I may have to pause in the middle, but just know I will be back to you all. Um, we have had our second snowstorm of the year, um, of the winter season, I should say. And looking out across the valley today, the far peaks have snow pretty far down actually and Ski Santa Fe already has uh, snow visible on the ski runs from our hill so um, they are across the valley as well but we can see uh, the Ski Santa Fe um, the different runs so they've already got snow on them and I think Taos is going to try to open uh, early this year because they it had it's been cold enough I think they've been making snow so they have a decent base and then um, Wolf Creek, which is in southern Colorado, which is a very, their ski resort is very high up. I think Ski Santa Fe is about 9,500 feet and I think Wolf Creek is above 10. But at any rate, Wolf Creek has like a 26 inch base already. It's crazy. This is really, really early for our area to have measurable snowfall. So. Uh, I've been enjoying the cold weather. We've had a couple of cold, gray, drizzly days, which are days I love, uh, but very different than our usual 360 days of sunshine here in, in New Mexico. So anyway, that all to say, things are well here, um, and I think we'll just kind of get going. Um, so we're gonna talk about knit knitting first, like usual. Uh, I am off to Stitches SoCal next week. I will be there Wednesday through Friday teaching some classes and in the Yarn Guys booth. So hope to see some of you there. Uh, that is my last show for the 2019 year, but then 2020 is already getting booked, which is great. Um, I enjoy doing all of that, so it's a lot of fun. Did want to let you guys know of a few things if you are signed up for my newsletter uh, which if you're not you can pop over to the Wooly Wonka website and you can either hit the contact me um, option and I will be glad to manually put you in there um, or there's also a link through the site uh, to keep you abreast of my teaching engagements, things coming up on the schedule, as well as a sale that I will be running for small business, uh, the small business weekend. But I'm actually kicking it off uh, a little bit early. So you'll have almost three weeks to buy patterns, uh, patterns in my shop that are accessory sized pieces. So hats, shawls, scarves, mittens, gloves, that kind of sized thing, not full garments, are all going to be 20% off with the code SMALLBIZ2019. And I will put a link to the Ravelry group uh, for Wooly Wonka Fibers as well down in the box below uh, because we'll also be hosting a knit along for the end of the year. So any accessory pattern that you might want to knit that is one of my designs you can post there i know a lot of you already have many of them um, but this gives you an option to either kind of fill in your library and pick up something new um, and maybe get a leg up on holiday gift knitting for those of you who do that or just pick something up fun for yourself that you would like to try uh, the club information is also available for the 2020 club that I'm running that is available in the Wooly Wonka Fibers group um, a little blurb about that there signups for that start on November 18th which is not this coming Monday but the next Monday 
and so you can kind of read ahead on the details in the Ravelry group and then if you'd like to sign up for that, which I'm very excited about, those slots are available starting November 18th, Monday, November 18th. Um, so those will be live in the shop after I get back from SoCal. Okay, so what have I been working on? I've been really concentrating on the beaded dress, which I'll show you in a minute. I did get a little bit of work done on Chauncey, um, and that was to finish up the first sleeve. I think I'm gonna wind up taking this as my travel project and see if I can't just bang this sleeve out next week because uh, I really would like to, to wear this and I would like to get this project off my needle. So um, really happy with you know how it looks. I'm anxious to have have a reason to finish it and get, get it on my body to wear. Um, so hopefully next time I see you guys in a couple of weeks, I will have that completely finished. Maybe even we'll have it on. Then the other project that I've been working on, and this has really been my focus because what I would like to do for this dress that I'm designing and knitting, um, it's a full length dress. So I've kind of divided it into top and bottom, knowing that the top will take much less time than the bottom. Um, I am halfway through my target number for the skirt. And my goal is to get to the waist. So basically knit the same amount that I've knit now, but since I'm working it from the bottom up, right, I'm decreasing as I go. So it's getting smaller which is the good news. Um, I have also gone to the next color in the gradient for this. So let me show you where this one is. So this is the bottom of the skirt right now. It is all of the beaded snowflake patterns on this gorgeous inky blue black and it also has a beaded hem. Um, I picked up a set of undergarments is the only way to describe it, right? So I got a camisole in a pale silver and I got a matching um, wedding petticoat. It's in pale gray as well, but it's got some layers of tulle so that while it's not like hugely poofy, it's got enough shape that it holds the, the bottom of the skirt out. And so I, you can see I've started the um, patterning up here on this gray part. So that will last basically to the low hip. And just to give you an idea of the size, there it is. It's, it's big. Um, I am very happy that the current circumference is um, going a little bit faster. The bottom of this was a hundred inches around. So yeah, um, on most normal sized women, I would be up to just above the knee in terms of length right now, but I'm planning to make this slightly longer, uh, so that it will fit on one of the super tall models that we tend to get for the runway shows. Again, that's being knit in, uh, Rama Yarns Alpaca Lin, which is a baby alpaca and linen blend. Um, I have this color gray, which is the darkest gray. And then I've got two other colors that will happen in the bodice part. So I am making progress on this. Um, Kim, uh, Spartan Stitcher, if you're watching, don't stress on my behalf. I'm going to get it done. Kim sent me a comment from my last video saying she was stressing for me to have that finished. But um, I think it will be done. My plan is to have the skirt done in November and then knit the bodice in December and then I actually have a photo shoot scheduled for it, kind of a concept shoot for January, late January. So yeah, I think I think it's doable. Um, I'm not I'm not feeling too stressed about it, but wait and see what I say when December rolls around. So anyway, that is knitting. Let's move on and we'll talk about books. Um, I only have one book to talk about. I know, big shocker, because that's not usually my way. 
Um, I am in the midst of reading two really long books. One is an audio book that's like 800 pages. And the other is the final Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. And I think... I think I only have about 150 pages left in that, but it's a long one. So, I mean, it's also, I think, over 600 pages. So I'll talk about both of those next time. Well, and to be honest, the audiobook, I don't think I'm going to even get through by the next time I talk to you. Like I said, it's very long. I think it's 24 hours of, of talking. So um, it'll be a while. Okay, so what I did read and finished up was a book called The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. This was originally written in French, translated into English. I do not read French. Um, I originally thought this book was going to be about a quaint little bookstore in Paris, which it kind of is, um, where the proprietor, he basically owns what he's calling a book pharmacy. So if you walk in he can assess what book it is that you need to kind of make your life better or fulfill your life. It's only very peripherally about that, even though that's kind of what the synopsis makes you think it's about. Um, it's basically a character study about the owner of this bookstore, Jean Perdue. He is 50. He is very rigid, his life is very orderly and organized and he lets no one in and he basically has no life except going to work. And all of this part of his personality came about because when he was in his early 20s, the woman he loved abandoned him. This is his description. Um, he felt that the woman that he loved abandoned him for her husband. Um, he was having an affair with a young woman who was married. They actually met just before she was going to be married and she wound up kind of keeping him and keeping the husband. So uh, he has put his entire life on hold because he is so wrapped up in the anger over how this woman ruined his life and she was the only one that he ever loved. So he has a great epiphany that maybe he needs to get his act together and he the bookstore that he owns is being run out of a long kind of houseboat barge that he has always had anchored uh, in the river and he has all of his books on there. It's where he goes to work. He lives in a boarding house and he kind of loses his mind one day and cuts the anchor and decides he's gonna go find this woman who deserted him. So the bulk of the book is actually about him coming to terms with this loss and realizing the fact that he's basically tossed 30 years of his life away because he's refused to let anybody in, make friends, fall in love again, have a life, really. So, the parts of this book that I liked were the references to other books. There are a fair number of those. It assumes that you have read many of the classics and at least are familiar with sort of French classical writing because um, there's sort of a lot of dropped quotes and dropped authors throughout. I liked that part of it. I loved the description of the scenery in France uh, as he's taking this houseboat through the canals and he, the people he meets and the different areas that he's um, motoring the boat through. Beautifully written, gorgeous descriptions. Um, and the characters he meets are interesting. What I didn't like about this book is basically it's this guy spending a lot of time in his head beating himself up over something that he should have done better and he kind of can't get over it. He spends most of the book in this sort of state of angst and self-recrimination and beating himself up about it. Everything. You know, take a deep breath, move on. You're now like in this on the south coast of France 
getting to swim in the ocean every day. You're visiting Provence and eating amazing foods and seeing amazing scenery. That's something to be happy about. He kind of has a really hard time getting over that hurdle. So a little too much navel gazing for me and not exactly the book that I thought it was. So I was a little bit disappointed with this book, but you know, I'd give it like a three and a half star rating if I could. It wasn't great, it was good. So uh, if it sounds like your thing, knock yourself out. Um, it's not one that I would probably recommend to a lot of people to read. I, there were parts of it that were a little bit of a slog to get through. So um, that's my reading summary for this, for this week. Let's move on to stitching. Okay, so I have been working mostly on just a few projects because as you know, I've been focusing on getting some things finished and accomplished and all that good stuff. But let's talk about those things I have been working on. Um, my focus full coverage piece for the month of October was Which Way? I use that for one of the Full Coverage Fanatics monthly themes, um, Fall Colors was October. So with all the oranges and reds in here, I thought that was very, very suitable. And it has that great kind of dark October theme to it with the witch and her familiar and the graveyard. So here is where this one is. I got quite a bit done. This is page three, and then this column was is kind of an extra column. It's technically page four, but it's like nine of the 10 stitches, I think. It's not very much. Um, but that is as far as I got. I felt like I made really good progress on this this time around. I was very happy with um, my progress. And I do still have a bit left to finish on this page, but I definitely felt like I got some good headway on it. Um, finished up the little bat and started bringing the moon down. So this will come out next year. Um, it won't be a super focused project for next year, but I am definitely going to try to get that page finished and then see what else I have, have time for. And I will talk briefly about some 2020 plans when we get closer to the end of the video. Uh, let's see. I've also been working pretty steadily on Village of Hawk Run Hollow. I know you guys have seen this like a million times, but here it is again. Um, you might remember I was done down through block nine. I had block 12 stitched except the black background. And I've started on block 10 and made really good progress on that this month. It is in the final stages. So I need to finish the horses and the barn. There's another horse that lives here. And the, this fenced in part with the apples is done and the roof is completed and I just have to fill in the white, what looks like white here. Um, it's actually gonna be cream, so it will look very similar to how it does now, but it will actually be stitched in. I opted to take out the Apple Orchard Farm writing that was on the barn roof. I didn't love it. Um, you can barely see it in the photo. Uh, I just, I didn't like the way that, well, A, I didn't like the fact that you can barely read it, and B, I didn't like the fact that it kind of was half on, half off this roof. It looked very odd to me. So what I'm doing for this block to personalize it because the farm name that I was gonna include that just was gonna be on the roof wouldn't fit. Um, I'm actually using horses that were from my childhood that I grew up with. So this one over here is gonna be a gray and that will be the Arabian that we had when I was, um, I think we got him when I was 10, 10 or 11. Um, you can see I'm personalizing the stall, the horse's names on the stall. So this is Ahab. He was the Arab thoroughbred cross we had. Um, he was not my riding horse. He was still very young uh, when I was riding more. 
Um, Imp was our Palomino, Tennessee Walker, so I'll finish him up. Uh, I, you can see I just started this horse here, who was actually going to be my pony. He was my first pony, whose name was Midnight. Um, all of the swear words that I learned as a kid, I learned from my grandmother because this pony was a Houdini and she would look out and find him having gotten out of the pasture and happily eating his way through her vegetable garden and she would tear out there after him. Um, she had a few uh, amazing swear words that she could string together that referred to that horse. Anyway, so that's going to be the personalization for that block. So I'm going to try to get this block completely finished up this month. And I am slowly chipping away on the black background. Um, I've been focusing on this block, so I haven't really been putting a, a thread a day into that. But I am going to work on this a bit this weekend and try to get that closer. And then I will have block 11, hopefully, that I can get done in December. It just it's just a big piece it just takes a long time to stitch those blocks um, so I worked on that and then oh here's my picture um, this past week one of our homework prompts in magical stitches was to pick up a piece you haven't worked on in the longest and I have several that I kind of started all at the same time at the end of last year with my great um, this is one of them and I had two that I started the same day and I didn't mark you know which I started first so I just picked this one because hey November and it was applicable for the date so this is Brenda Gervais wordplay for November um, and I am stitching this on it's a 28 count natural linen I think it might be R&R &R. I'm using color and cotton threads on this and when I started I just had like this little bit of the lettering done so I finished all of those letters I added the cornucopia some of the pumpkins and I started work on the turkey I'd love to say that this is going to get finished this month because it's not a huge project but realistically only if it comes out for like a homework prompt will I likely pull it um, to stitch on because it's not it's not a priority for this year and then finally the focus piece that I'm working on in full for full coverage fanatics this month um, our monthly theme is things with wings so this has this little chickadee type bird right there and so I'm using it for that and also because it's very wintry feeling to me um, I love this artwork. So this is the mini Winter's Encounter artwork by Laura Prindle, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And here is where this one is. So this is um, the first column, page, uh, sorry, column one finishes about there. There's like three and a half rows to finish that. Um, but I have opted to come up here and work in this section with this really boring, very, very pale pink and white. You can't even really tell where, where the white is, I don't think. But at any rate, um, you can kind of see the tips of his mane is starting right here. So I will be getting to his face on this page, which I'm very excited about. Um, so that is where I am currently on that. This is 25 count easy guide with just you know, DMC one over one. So that's what I'm working on for this month. And this one will also be out again in December for the uh, final December monthly theme in full coverage fanatics, which is like a winter kickoff. So snow, winter winds, all of it. Yeah. Um, so I'm chipping away at that and we'll see how far we get this month. Um, it's not a project that I take with me when I travel. So with my tour to SoCal coming up and then we're gonna be on the East Coast for almost a week for Thanksgiving this year, we'll see. I'm not sure how much I'll get done on that. But at any rate, it's on, the, it's on my frame, I'm working on it. 
this month and next month. Um, so jumping ahead, let's talk quickly about some plan things. For the rest of this month, obviously I'll be working on that and Hawk Run Hollow, those are my priorities. So you'll see those again. I'm gonna fit them into whatever homework prompts for magical stitches that I can. Um, I did, and I think I mentioned this before, I'm opting not to do the magical stitches Disney version next year. Uh, I have some personal goals that I wanna meet and kind of focus on and not get too distracted from. And to be honest, I like some of the Disney things, but I'm not as big a fan of those as I am of Harry Potter. So um, it was it was a kind of easy decision. I'm gonna miss having the monthly challenge or weekly challenges, but um, I have gone through and added a whole bunch of things to my planning calendar. Um, Full Coverage Fanatics has a whole bunch of stitch alongs next year that I plan to participate in. As well as Semi Sane Stitchers, they have several really good ones already up if you're interested. I'll put a link to those both those groups below. Um, and then uh, thanks to an invite from Lisa from Lisa Stitching and such, uh, I got added to Cheryl McKinney's Cross Stitch and 30 a Day Journal group. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but it is a closed group and she's keeping it very small. So I don't believe she has, um, open slots. She opened five or 10, something like that. And they were all by invite only. So when she opens them again, perhaps, you know, she'll have some other space, but she's trying to keep it small and manageable. She does weekly prompts, which I have also been enjoying doing and tying them into different projects that I'm working on. I was able to use the November word play for one of hers. Um, stitch on something with a cornucopia in it. Perfect. Uh, so I have a whole bunch of other challenges planned out for next year. Uh, if you are interested, I'm not going to set up a Facebook group or anything like that, but I am going to stick to my 20 in 20 concept where I'm going to try to finish 20 things in 2020. Uh, page finishes counts as a finish. So I right now have uh, 14 smalls that are kind of this size. It's the remainder of the word plays, um, a couple of drawn threads, a prairie schooler, and one dimensions petite kit. So I'm gonna to try to get all of those finished and then I can swap in smalls as I wish, but not have quite so many smalls to look at. And then I am gonna to stick to my prior goal, concept, whatever, of trying to alternate between um, one full coverage project that I want to get a finish on, a complete finish, and trying to get some page finishes on ones that I am not planning on getting a page finish or a full finish on in 2020. So I've decided that Winter's Encounter is actually going to be my focus on a finish project for 2020. I think I can do it. It's, it's got a lot of stitching left to it, but I'm going to get as close as I can and certainly we'll get page finishes on it. Um, I know that I will be starting the Once Upon a Fairy Tale, the new Amy Stewart, which should be charted and out from Heaven and Earth Designs at the end of November, so coming up in the next few weeks. I'm not going to start it in, 2020, in 2019. I'm, I'm still holding strong on my No Starts 2019 thing, even though I now really want to start that as soon as it comes out. Um, but you'll see that as well as my other full coverage pieces. Um, I'll probably try to do some kind of an update planning video maybe in January to talk more about what I'm going to slot in and where. Um, but I do have my, my calendar list of months and themes and all of that broken out. So, um, definitely doing some front end planning for that. Uh, and hopefully also we'll have a nice mix of some big pieces, full coverage, as well as just big pieces. And then 
chip away at, at the whole group of smalls that I started last year in 2018 in December. Um, I've, I've done pretty well. I've gotten about half of them done of what I started, but I would like to get the remainder done and off my plate so that I can just pick and choose what smalls I'd like to work on and spend a lot more time focusing on the monster projects, which I seem to gravitate towards. So uh, I think that is it for this go round. Uh, thank you for joining me. If you are a new view viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I am delighted for both of those groups to have spent the last half hour with me. Um, I'm not sure how my recording schedule is going to go. I may try to sneak in a recording just after I get back from SoCal, from Pasadena, because otherwise that whole week of Thanksgiving when we're gone, I'm not sure that I will have much to talk about, nor will I have any time to actually film a video. So I'm going to try that. Just be aware of my recording schedule may be a little off. But until I talk to you all again, have a wonderful mid-November. I hope you are all well in your corners of the world and that you're getting lots of time to spend doing the things you love. So I will talk to you all again before the end of November. And until then, take care, y'all. Bye.